This video accompanies part five of our Learn to DJ email course. It's completely free and you can subscribe to it right now by going to digitaldjtips.com slash join. Okay, part five is have you got what it takes to be a DJ? I'm just going to quickly go through three things that we can't teach you. If you have these three things, then you have what it takes to be a DJ and you just need to let us do the rest with you. But if you haven't got one of these things, then maybe it isn't for you. So now is the time to tick those boxes before committing further. Next week, we're going to look at two routes you can take. The, the fast route, where you can be playing this time next month in front of a crowd, uh, and the slow route, where you can learn as you're carrying on doing other things. Either route's going to work fine for you, but you must have three things we're about to talk about. So, number one, love of music. And I mean a passionate love of music. The kind of love of music that raises you above everyone around you. If you've always thought, oh, I've got more, more records than everyone else, I... I'm the one who can tell my friends what, what to listen to now. If you've always been the kind of person who puts music on because you um, can't find the words to express yourself, so you just put the record on that expresses yourself and turn it up loud, uh, then you've got it. You've got, you've got what you need. You've got that love of music. Music is your words. Just like a writer needs to have a, a love of words in order to write well, as a DJ, music are your words. They're your individual words. They're the things you slot together to do your thing. You need to have a love of those words. Otherwise, it ain't going to work for you. For me, I remember really, really clearly when I first realised this. I used to listen to the radio under my pillow at night when I was 10, uh, when my parents thought I was asleep, uh, with a little headset. I actually made the radio myself. My father was an electrical engineer, and he had, from his childhood, um, one of those kind of boxes that's got 50 projects in one. And one of these projects was a radio, so I built this radio. I used to listen to it night after night after night, listening to pop music radio when my parents thought I was asleep. And that's when my love of music got cemented. And I, since that day, have been exactly the same, just totally obsessed. You need that obsession. Tick your box. When did you decide that you had this love of music? How do you know that you have got a bigger love of music than those around you? After all, all a DJ is, is, as Paul Van Dyke says, that freak in the corner playing records while everyone else has fun. You know, your job is to get your fun from the records that you play. So passion for music is, is the number one. Tick that box now, you're going to need it. Number two is technical ability. I can split this into two areas. One, you need musical ability, the ability to understand music in a technical aspect. So we're talking about um, bars and beats and measures. We're talking about keys and scales. Now, if you were sat there going, whoa, I don't know any of this stuff, that's all right, it doesn't matter. I didn't say you need to know it, I said you need to have the ability to know it. You need to not be scared of getting your sleeves rolled up and understanding the mathematics behind music. We'll show you what you need to know, but you need to be happy doing that. Because just like a drummer needs to understand rhythm and when things come in and when things go out, and just like a guitarist needs to understand scales on his guitar and how to tune the instrument, you're a musician, you're... you're, you're your language, your words, is music. So you need to understand that music. It's not good enough just to say, yeah, I like it. You need to understand it. The second technical thing you need is kind of what nowadays is called geekiness. You know, I, I'm a geek. I built my radio when I was 10. Of course I'm a geek. I spent most of my teenage years programming computers. I'm a geek. Um, I, can, I can run the Digital DJ Tips website pretty much single-handedly with a bit of help from designers and so on. Uh, in the area I'm not so good at. You know, I'm au fait with computers, I'm au fait with technology, and it's something that I will teach myself bits and pieces if I don't know the answers. And again, you don't need to know how DJ equipment works or how tractor software works or any of that. You don't need to know it, but you need to be happy learning it. And it's absolutely, it's incredibly important. Say your computer crashes or your DJ gear goes down or the PA fails in the middle of a gig, everyone's going to look to you to sort it out. You need to be the kind of person who can take a deep breath and logically work out what went wrong and fix it because no one else is going to do it. I can't, I can't put that in you. You need, to, you need to know that you're comfortable with that. So identify that in yourself. Be sure you've got that before you waste time and money and effort trying to become a DJ. There's not going to be someone stood there by your right-hand side sorting these things out for you. It's going to be you sorting it out. And the third thing, which only occurred to me when I was preparing the... Um, preparing the material for today's lesson actually. The third thing I think is really, really important because it pulls the other two together. If, if the 
passion for music gives you the words, if you like, and the, 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 the technical ability, both in geekiness and in um, the ability to understand the music, uh, gives you kind of the ability to make your sentences and structure everything. Then the third thing is the whole reason for doing it, and that is you need to understand what it's like to lose it on a dance floor. You need to understand what it feels like to be there in the middle of a dance floor and everything just suddenly makes sense, a penny drops, and music takes over. You, you need that because it instructs where you're going with everything else. That's the little voice in the back of your head. Every time you hear a new record, every time you start doing a mix, every time you're looking through the list of tunes and choosing what to play next, every time you stood there as a DJ looking at the dance floor, working out why the girls in the corner are dancing, working out why the lads over there aren't dancing, working out who's tapping their feet and who's looking bored. This is the feeling, this is the little thing that informs the way you think in these situations. For me, again, I was very young, I think I was 10 or 11, um, and I was at a teenage disco. My mum used to take my brother and me to the, to the local under 12 disco, um, so it wasn't even a teenage disco, it was even younger than that. And um, I remember so, so clearly, I was stood in my favourite position, which was by the loudspeaker, uh, in this community centre, basically, with the curtains closed and a mobile DJ set up, who himself couldn't have been more than 18 or 19 years old. But of course I thought he was the coolest guy in the world. Um, he was playing a tune which had this kind of Burundi African rhythm played by two drummers. It's kind of... <laughs> which would now be seen as like really fast tribal house, I guess, or even some kind of bordering on drum and bass kind of stuff. Um, but back then it was just post-punk pop music. It was Kings of the Wild Frontier by Adam and the Ants, uh, for any train spotters out there. And um, I just remember it so clearly. The, the tune came on, it swept through the room, it swept through me, I could feel the bass in my stomach, and I just, I just lost it. And my, my life changed. From then on, I knew what it was like to really feel music on a dance floor. And it, it's never left me. And when I became a DJ, six or seven years later, um, that was there. That was what I was aiming at. That's what I was using the music and using the ability to use the equipment and to mix and, and all that. That's what, that's what the direction I was taking, was trying to give other people that feeling. If you haven't had that, you're never going to be a good DJ. So there's the three things. Musical ability, technical ability, and a love of the dance floor, an understanding of what it's all about. If you've got those things, we can teach you the rest. Please don't let anyone tell you any different. Please don't let people say, you're using a laptop, it's not real DJing. Or, DJing's too easy nowadays, anyone can do it. Or, ah, everyone wants to be a DJ, what makes you different? If you have those three things, that makes you different enough. So, tick your boxes, and next week we're going to look at a couple of routes you can take to get in front of your first audience and to play your first DJ gig. Thanks for watching.